Welcome. Let us see how to level up a trap using character efficiently. Traps allow you to cast spells by proxy, much like totems, but the difference lies in the way in which it occurs. Totems cast spells continuously, while traps do it once. You can also place more traps at the same time and stack them up for a big damage burst once an enemy enters their activation range. Traps can be connected to basically any non-channeling spell in the game via trap support, but a lot of players use pre-made traps to save a socket. Seismic Trap, Explosive Trap, and Ice Trap are some of the most popular choices for saboteurs, especially at the start of a new league. This guide aims to help you with the progression from the first act up until yellow or red maps, at this point you'll be able to transition into the final stage of any desired build. Traps are some of the best tools to do so, especially when used by Saboteur, one of Shadow's ascendancies. It has many keystones dedicated solely to improving traps damage, throwing speed, AoE, and cooldown recovery rate. What's even better, the passive skill tree is abundant with nodes and clusters serving the same purpose, and almost all of them are located very close to Shadow's starting location. The definition of traps might sound like a clunky and unwieldy archetype, and to some extent, it is. Nevertheless, traps are not as bad as their specification sounds, you can throw them around at the same speed as you'd cast any spell and move forward, with no need to aim. It creates a short window of opportunity for enemies close by to hit you, but this issue can be mitigated by Born in the Shadows Keystone combined with auras and skills for a high evasion rating and spell suppression chance, making you exceptionally safe in the process. There are a few options to choose from, and a few more variables to consider when picking the right starting skill. All of the four traps presented here can be used indefinitely, there is no need to switch between them, and each one has its own merits. Explosive Trap is the first trap available, it deals mixed fire and physical damage. At level 12 you're free to switch to Lightning Trap. Level 28 grants you the ability to use an Ice Trap or Seismic Trap, the two most popular choices in recent years. Explosive Trap deals physical damage, half of which is converted to fire. It can be used with added fire damage support which is also available at level 1 and is very fitting. It deals relatively low damage on its own, but the initial explosion is followed by a number of smaller ones which result in satisfying damage. It's good for dealing with bosses. With some additional skills, it will grow stronger as it has the advantage of dealing converted damage. If your future plan is to use a fire-oriented trap, using an explosive trap to level up first is definitely the best course of action. Link it with swift assembly, multiple traps, added fire damage, later, trap and mine damage, advanced traps, inspiration, fire penetration, and cluster trap support gems. Use it with Herald of Ash for a vastly improved clear speed and damage. To improve your fire damage use a flammability curse, and a wave of conviction to cause exposure, supported by combustion to penetrate even more fire resistance. Lightning Trap is an alternative choice that distinguishes itself by its very large area of effect, Upon activating it fires multiple projectiles in all directions which are able to hit opponents far away. It's the best option if your priority is fast clearing, but keep in mind that it's really good only after getting an extra pierce for these projectiles. Lighting Trap also has the Vol variant which can be used in addition to the Lightning Spire Trap at level 28. These are stationary spires that deal lighting damage around them, it's the same damage type as the Lightning Trap and so it will be as effective as your main setup. Link it with swift assembly, multiple traps, added lightning damage, later, trap and mine damage, advanced traps, inspiration, lightning penetration, and cluster trap support gems. Use it with wrath aura for more lightning damage, conductivity curse, and hydrosphere to reduce the lightning resistance of your enemies. Ice trap is one of the best traps due to its cold damage which is able to freeze and chill, that is a very reliable safety feature that renders this trap the best choice in a long run. It's a well-rounded trap with a medium-sized area of effect, which can be upgraded by improving the throwing speed or linking it with cluster trap support gem. Starting on the right side of the passive skill tree is very helpful in this scenario due to some extra cold-related nodes located there. Link it with swift assembly, multiple traps, added cold damage, later, trap and mine damage, advanced traps, inspiration, 
hypothermia, charged traps, and cluster trap support gems. To deal more cold damage we suggest using Hatred Aura. Frostbite Curse and Frostbomb are used to reduce cold resistance substantially. Seismic Trap is the most popular choice despite the recent nerf it has received. It's a duration trap that continuously deals damage to all the targets around it with powerful physical hits. It has very poor clear speed, that's why it's always used alongside Exanguinate spell turned into a trap via trap support. With two setups like this, you're well equipped to deal with any type of content in the most optimized manner. You can then very easily grab some spell poison nodes on a passive skill tree and equip specific unique items for mixed damage build that melts bosses with its ramping up poison and added chaos damage. Link Seismic Trap with Swift Assembly, Life Tap, Later, Trap and Mind Damage, Advanced Traps, and Brutality Support Gems. Brutality disables all other types of damage, so don't use it if you can apply poison. If you can cause poison, and you don't deal any elemental damage, use Unbound Ailments and Void Manipulation. Exsanguinate, a spell that deals physical damage and physical dot via tendrils, these are extremely fast and can chain. It's used here for killing smaller enemies, use it alongside Seismic Trap which was mentioned a second ago. Link it with Trap, Chain, and Cluster Trap support gems. If you're using Deerstalker Boots with built-in trap support you will be able to fit a fifth gem. Go for the trap and mind damage if that's the case. Herald of Agony should be used to gain an additional chance to poison, and for a curse, it's for the best to pick Despair, it's great with poison damage. Also, make sure to have a source of Withered debuff. During the leveling process, you will need to, at some point, gather more defensive features. The most common solution is to gain evasion via Grace Aura and Defiance Banner, which also grants armor. It synergizes well with Born in the Shadows Keystone which blinds enemies. The second aura to be used is Determination for more and increased armor, but it is often skipped, as it reserves a lot of mana. Skitterbots are nearly mandatory skill due to the damage and utility bonuses. The above-mentioned Aura and Herald skills for specific builds should fit in here too. Having just three expensive Auras up at all times would be extremely hindering as even with Charisma and Influence notables you're left with almost nothing to cast your spells with. Get more Mana Reservation Efficiency from items or make a choice to get rid of some Mana Reserving spells. You can use Clarity for a faster Mana Regeneration Rate. You're also supposed to use a movement ability, which can be Dash, Flame Dash, or Frost Blink. A Guard Spell, Steel Skin, or Molten Shell if you're using Determination Aura. You can use the Withering Step to move faster, gain Phasing, Elusive, and apply Withered Debuff for more Chaos Damage. Bear Trap is another skill that should be used in all of the trap builds, it increases trap damage and reduces the movement speed of enemies. One of the spell setups should be linked to the Arcane Surge support to grant you the buff for more spell damage and mana regeneration. We recommend linking a spell that causes an exposure with Hextouch support, Curse and Arcane Surge support. The build requires no unique items, whilst the rare ones are common and soundly priced. It's one of the reasons it is one of, if not the most popular build archetype for the League starter builds. A lot of good spell modifiers can be found on regular rare wands, daggers, or scepters. For defenses, seek maximum life and elemental resistances at first, then get more evasion rating and spell suppression. Use Tabula Raza for 6, white, link sockets. By far the best armor to level up with, but it might be a bit expensive at the start of a new league. Goldrum grants a lot of elemental resistances. These are very important at all stages of the game. La Hup of All can be used for elemental resistances, attributes, and extra damage, all very useful. Praxis reduces mana cost of skills, increases maximum mana, and mana regeneration rate. Ming's Heart is an extremely good ring for Seismic Trap, it improves your damage and chaos resistance but reduces maximum life and energy shield. Astramentis grants a lot of attributes which are often needed to equip items and level up gems. Atziri's foible is yet another great piece of jewelry for when you struggle with mana sustain. 
Dodre's Tenure Gloves give a lot of damage to your spells, but slightly reduce cast speed. It won't affect trap throwing speed. The String of Servitude Belt can give you a lot of elemental resistances if it has a proper implicit modifier. Ash Scholar is the best fire-oriented weapon, it adds a lot of fire damage and covers enemies in ash for even more fire damage. Use it with an explosive trap. 7 League Step are available at level 1. These boots increase your movement speed by 50%, that's a lot. You can equip Wanderlust boots for extra ES, mana regeneration, movement speed, and freeze immunity. If you're using a secondary trap setup, like Exsanguinate, Deerstalker boots are the best option, it allows you to fit a fifth support gem. Use Coated Shrapnel for an extra chance to poison and extra damage, it's good with Seismic Trap. Start your Flasks collection with Life, Mana, and Quicksilver ones for more movement speed. Later on add Jade Flask for Evasion Rating, Quartz Flask for Spell Suppression, and Atziri's Promise. Atziri's Promise is great with almost any build, just be sure that you're not using Brutality support in your Seismic Trap alongside it. The same goes for Sin's Rebirth, extremely good with an Explosive or Seismic Trap. The passive skill tree is the most intimidating part of the game for new players, the game offers little to no guidance on how to allocate passives properly. Fortunately, it is rather easy to create a skill tree for traps. You can highlight the passives with trap in them and just go there. Besides trap nodes, you will also need to seek maximum life, evasion rating, and spell suppression, the core defensive layers every saboteur should have. If you've chosen seismic trap with chaos damage, your passive skill tree will differ from that of elemental damage-oriented trapper. Shadow's starting location is full of chaos damage and less so with elemental damage, but that's not an issue. Elemental damage traps are suited for critical strikes instead. Remember that traps are spells, mostly, and will benefit only from spell modifiers. Trickery is probably the first notable you will allocate, it grants damage, critical strike chance, and some attributes. It leads to Blood Siphon for increased maximum life, life on kill, and strength. It's all very good, especially at the start. Another notable nearby is Saboteur, the mandatory notable passive for any Saboteur due to the trap bonuses, it's also very close to the Shadow's starting location. Critical Strike is not very important in the early stages of the game, but it only costs 2 points to allocate the Assassination Notable. Written in Blood increases maximum life, energy shield, and extra strength. These all are of use. The first notable in the large trap cluster on the right side of the skill tree is high explosives. It enhances critical strikes and generates power charges. Unstable munitions is another notable in the same trap cluster. This one increases the area of effect, damage, and trigger AoE. Blood Drinker is the third notable granting more maximum life, its bonus for life recovery on kill is extremely good and makes a noticeable difference. One of the best trap nodes, Master Sapper, increases damage, allows to place more traps, and generates frenzy charges. Every build needs one or two mana reservation efficiency notables to fit more auras. Here it is Charisma, the best one. For other notables in the next category, we've chosen the ones for more life, that is Herbalism and Revenge of the Hunted, for Spell Suppression, Inveterate. For Evasion Rating, Survivalist. Trap Damage, Overprepared which is good with traps that store charges, and Expeditious Munitions. Influence is great if you have many high-level auras. Piercing Shot is mandatory with Lighting Trap. The B tier consists of some more specific passives. If you're using Seismic Trap that deals primarily poison damage, allocate Wasting, Atrophy, and maybe Force Shaper if you can afford it. It will also make the center of the skill tree more appealing, you can head there for exceptional performance, Reflexes, Mage Bane Keystone, and Constitution. Quick Step, Intuition, and Instinct are good defensive notables with Spell Suppression. Heartseeker and Doomcast are critical strike passives, useful in the late game. Now for the Masteries. For Life Masteries pick the ones for plus 50 and plus 10% increased maximum life. 
It is the best way to gain more maximum life at the early stages of the game, and the reduction in life recovery is not a big deal, you gain a lot of life on kill from passives. Having increased trap trigger AOE makes you much safer and increases your leveling pace, it's one of the trap masteries. 10% more skill effect duration as duration mastery is only good with seismic trap, it makes the trap last longer. Allocate evasion mastery for increased mana reservation efficiency for grace, that is if you need to do so, but you most likely will. Pick poison mastery for an increased poison duration if you're using the seismic trap setup that deals poison damage. For spell suppression mastery, go for, critical strike chance is increased by chance to suppress spell damage. It can potentially grant up to 100% increased critical strike chance, making it good with elemental damage traps. And that is all. You should be now able to finish all 10 acts in less than a day with no initial investment using one of the 4 traps presented here. Good luck.